Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we love you and we praise your holy name. Thank you so much, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, your wonderful presence, Lord, being here with us and allowing us to, to praise and to worship you. Lord, I want to pray for each one who come and gave their tithing and offering to you as an act of worship. I want to pray blessings upon them and their families. Lord, I want to pray for each person here today, Lord, they'll completely die to their will and die to themselves. And I pray that you'll open up, Lord, their spiritual ears and eyes. They can see and hear and understand, Lord, your word. I pray for myself, Lord, that I completely die to my will. And I pray, Lord, for unlimited portion of your anointing power, your spirit to flow through me and upon me to allow the word to flow here this morning. There's someone here that needs to be born again or healed or set free or delivered from anything, Lord. Let them accept you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This message today, now we're going to have it on the screen here in just a minute, but we'll also have next to you in the pew, we'll always put the scriptures out there for you to bring with you. That's on purpose. Um, but this message today, the, the Word of God in the Bible, are they the same? Let me explain to you how I got this message first. <laughs> um, last week, you know, for the last three or four weeks, I'm always, I'm always teaching the truth about what the Bible has to say about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And over the years when God has revealed this to me, um, it's really sad to see because my spiritual eyes have been opened up and I see a lot of people who I know are saved, who are born again, who loves God, but Satan has fooled them. You know, years, 15 or so years ago when I first come here, we had a lot of young people here and all those kids now have grown up and they've gone off to college. Now I'm looking for the next group to come in here. So here's the problem I've seen though, is these kids goes off to college if you're not taught the biblical truth in church and all you're taught is religion, the kids goes to college, they have some professor who will challenge them with truth of the world system and start saying, your God is fake, your God is pagan, and the kid says he's been in church her whole life, having no clue how to argue back about Christmas and Easter and Good Friday and all this garbage that we have out here that's not even in Scripture, okay? So they're challenging these kids, but I thought he was born on December 25th. You thought wrong. That's not Scripture, but your professor and your atheist knows better, but the Christians don't know any better because we follow religious garbage out here in the world that's not even in this Bible. So my question is, do you know the Bible and do you know God? Do you understand the difference between the Word of God and the Bible? And most folks don't. Some know the Bible and don't know the Word of God. And some know the Word of God and don't know the Bible. And how I got this message was, Last, at, at last week, while well, this started, on TBN, on TV, I was sitting here cooking and listening in the kitchen, and it pops on, and our social pastor called me, and, and then Tony's mom called me and said, how are you watching this on TV? And it was a big program about the origins of Easter, and it was not what it actually is. They was taking the, the Easter and was taking it all and making it a wonderful thing, going back to the Catholic Church, and it was all just tying it in and leaving out all the, the biblical things and turning it around and making it a religious thing. And I just couldn't stand it. So I turned around and I called them. And I started talking to this lady on the phone. And she said, I've never heard what you're saying before. And I said, well, show, t show it to me in Scripture where Jesus Christ died on Good Friday and show it to me where he resurrected on Sunday morning. I sure it will. I said, okay, I got my Bible right here waiting on you. It never happened. She couldn't show it to me because it's not there. I said, let me show you what the Bible really says. And I started teaching her about Passover and unleavened bread and the feast of first fruits when he actually resurrected and Tammuz, that kind of thing. Well, her boss gets on the phone from TBN and hangs up on me. So that really made, made me mad. So I go online and I start putting this stuff out online. But it goes out worldwide. Then there's another thing that popped up about, quote, Good Friday. They had a big, giant, singing Good Friday program. And I also come back with that and said how this is not biblical at all. It goes back to Tamu. That's where Good Friday comes in at. That's got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. That's a Catholic thing. 
So when I put that out there, come Monday, <laughs> the whole thing blew up, which is fine. God, just, God was using me. I had a debate for 12 hours on Monday, about 10 hours on Tuesday, and about four on Wednesday with about 50 different people when it's all over with. And it was interesting. I had it from Catholics to uh, Greek Orthodox people all over Europe, all over the world, was trying to debate. And I said, okay, God, show me what you want me to do with this. I said, because I'm doing this to educate people. It was very interesting. And so during this process, God gave me this message. So what I want to do is bring you through that and show you what the Bible has to say and what I went through because you need to understand this yourself because as a Christian, you can't just say a prayer and say, I get to go to heaven, go do your job, and go hide in the woods somewhere. you got to get out here in the world system and things are going to happen and people are going to challenge you on your belief and your faith. Do you know who you serve? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Do you understand all these things that people argue because these young kids today, they're, they're not like it was when I grew up. We didn't have no computers and cell phones back then. All we had was encyclopedias and things like that. You had to go look it up for yourself. And you heard certain things, but you didn't have the technology they have now. So that's why I tell people all the time, don't believe anything I say. Google and check out every word I say, hallelujah. I want you to. I dare you to. I challenge you to do that. Why not I do that? Not to argue, but for you to learn. Because if you can go back yourself and see what I'm saying is true, then what I'm showing you is not what I say. It becomes yours. Amen? Amen? That's what it's all about. That's why I want you to do this. So I told them on, on the internet, Google the orders of Easter yourself. But they're afraid to do it. I mean, I, I cannot tell you over the years how many people who I've talked to and I'll mention this, like this, like this past week had this happen, and when you start saying, well, Jesus Christ didn't die on Good Friday. He didn't resurrect on Sunday morning. That's not biblical. And you can see the color leave, leave people's faces because they're like, you know, I can't believe this pastor's saying that because I've always heard, I've always heard, I've always heard. It's not in Scripture. But what is in Scripture is what I've been teaching for the last three or four or five weeks. So every time this is the, the beginning of spring is when all this kind of stuff happens because people are the most uneducated about God's word with this and Satan just fools us. He fools us. And you really want to have a true relationship with God? I'm going to show what the Bible has to say about that. Amen? So let's, let's get started with this. Go to John chapter 1 and let's look at verses 1 through 5. Very interesting here. Now watch this right here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Out of all the people who I was debating on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday have no clue about the Word of God. They, they read Scripture, but when light was shining, darkness comprehended it not. Have you ever met people like in the world who can quote you Scripture after Scripture after Scripture who don't know Jesus Christ? Atheists can do it. Professors can do it. Quoting Scripture does not make you all that in God. Do you know him? This is, that's why I was showing you this, this, this song Or Do you really know him? And this is the problem that, that I've been seeing throughout uh, most of churches because the biggest problem is you're going to find in churches most pastors don't teach anymore. They get up and give you a joke and a three-point sermon and preach for 20 minutes about, quote, salvation to a bunch of folks who says they're already saved. And then we go home and you're never taught anything. This is what's wrong with churches today. So let's have more programs and more cars on the stage and more balloons and more things shooting up in the air and all the fun stuff to get more folks in. Let's put some high top tennis shoes on and some skinny jeans and act all cool and muscle and get into all this stupid stuff. Or, it's the, or this is your best life now. Talk about how great everything's going to be. This ain't my best life now. Mine's going to be inside the thousand year millennium. Hallelujah. But it's not supposed to be your best life now. God don't ever promise that. 
God says that you will be persecuted. He says, if, they, if they're going to come against me, they're just going to come against you. If you stand up for God, now if you want the world to like you, don't preach the truth. Preach religion and humbah and all this kind of garbage stuff that everybody does in the world, and everybody's going to like you. Okay? Don't ever tell the truth about anything. Don't ever, because I'm going to tell you how many pastors who I've talked to who knows what I teach is true, but they say, I can't teach it in my church. Then why even teach? Why even go to a church like that? If you know the truth and you don't speak the Bible, what it really says, can you imagine standing before Almighty God one day? Can you imagine that? There's a lot of pastors there who knows exactly what I'm talking about. So this started on Monday for me. And it was so sad to see people who does not know because they fight and they argue with you over and over and over. And the thing is, guys, what I learned, so many people out here does not believe that the Bible is the inherent true word of God that came from God. They think it can be changed. Now, I don't know what you're standing on, but I'm going to show you what they told me. I learned a lot from other people. It's amazing when you start hearing people talk about this and how mad they get. So now let's carry it deeper. Go over to John chapter 10. Watch this right here. This gets very interesting. John 10. I'm showing you in God's word, the Bible, of what it really says about him and what this means. So John 10, go over to verses 34 and 35 and watch this. Now, this is where he's talking to the Jewish people and they're uh, uh, kind of going against him about what he's saying and this is what he says back to them. Jesus answered them, it is not written, is it not written in your law that I said you are gods? Little g. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. Now notice both are mentioned here. Scripture and the Word of God. So what's he talking about here? Now I'm going to read to you in Psalms 82 what Jesus was quoting. Okay, Psalms 82. And here's where it goes back to. I have said you are little g gods and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princesses. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Now listen, before I, before I go to this next part, make sure you understand, you are not gods. That's not what it's talking about. If you go back to Psalms and look, he's pretty much mocking them. In other words, all those who's in charge is talking about human beings are like a God as far as we're over the animals. We're over the nature. Okay, we're over, but, but you are not a God. In other words, no one's supposed to worship you. You're in the image of God. Hallelujah. Without Him, you are nothing, but, ever, but you are everything in Him. Does that make any sense? And if you don't understand the difference there, because there's a lot of people out here who's trying to act like they're God, but they're not. So I'm trying to show you why He was quoting them. There's a difference between Scripture and the Word of God. And you need to make sure you know, because these folks, I was talking to them Monday and Tuesday, they have no clue about the Word of God. They can quote scripture all day long and not know God's word. That's very different. I want you to see this. Now go to John chapter 5. Now it's going to start making sense to you. Watch this right here. John 5. This is very interesting here. Watch. Look in verses um, 37. And the Father himself which hath, hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Now watch this. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Now watch. And you have, and you have not his word abiding in you. Please underline that. His word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him you believe not. Now watch what he says here. This is what happened to me on Monday and Tuesday with these people. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Please get a hold of this. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of God in you. 
I have come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his name, his own name, him shall you receive. And that's going to also back to the Antichrist. That, that, that's going to happen here soon. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do you think that I will accuse you to the Father? There is one that accuseth you, even Moses in whom you trust. Now watch. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. Go back in the scripture. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe me? How many understands the first five books are called what? The Torah. That is scripture given to mankind through Moses by Almighty God. How many here know that the law, the Torah, is wonderful and is good? Okay? But if you search scriptures, like he's saying here, any human being, and just try to search the scriptures for eternal life, you're not going to find it minus the Word of God. In other words, the scriptures are pointing you to the Word of God. And what I experienced on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday was people can quote scriptures minus not knowing the word of God. So the question is, is the Bible the word of God? Yes and no. No, words, the Bible is given by God. It's God's holy scriptures given to us. But you cannot go to heaven by religion or by a bunch of rules or by following a pope or doing all this goofy stuff that we, that we try to do on our own. You will not go to heaven. There's no eternal life there. Even though God gave these scriptures and, and gave, gave this to us, it points to the very one which his name is Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. Does that make any sense? That's why I showed you the very beginning how it says he's, he is the word. He's there in the very beginning. If think about life is in him. Does that make any sense? Do y'all know how many people out here in the world that's religious? Religion is awful. God did not create man's religion. There's no such thing as a Methodist Christian, a Baptist Christian, a Pentecostal Christian. No such thing as that even exists. Did y'all know that? To quit going out here seeing people trying to push their religions. It's got nothing to do with God. You're either born again believer of the word that's in scripture or you're not. Does that make any sense? And I'm telling you, I, I had this. Let me give you some examples of what I experienced over the phone, uh, over the internet. It was very, very interesting, these long debates I had. And I'm telling you, I, I'm glad that God allowed me to do it. It was very tiring because I was trying to get things done. I had other things to do. Money's usually when I take off, but God had this me keep going and going and going. This went on until like 1 o'clock in the morning, okay, on Monday. But the Orthodox Church and the Catholics, and right in the middle was, quote, the Episcopalians trying to, trying to, trying to jump in there too, um, were all challenging me uh, about the Bible because they put their trust in, they said the Bible was okay, it's good, but their Pope and their Apostles' Creed and their church now can change the Word, change the Bible to make it fit of what we need to today. And this is what they was going through, okay? So God had me telling me what to say to them. And it was very interesting, so... Um, this guy told me, he says, I challenge you, because he could not believe what I was saying to him. I challenge you, he says, to give me this one scripture that shows you, Greg Drake, have access to God. So I gave him 15. Okay? So I'm going to give you this one of them. And when I did, then you can hear crickets chirping. Because they don't know the word of God. They know scripture. They don't know the word of God contained within scripture. Okay? Bottom line, they have no relationship. I was talking about Wednesday in our teaching. What, what does the word relationship mean with God? It means making him Lord of your life. Why do you think I say here every time and I pray God open up their spiritual ears and eyes that they can see and hear and understand God's word? Because see, 
a professor or a scientist or anybody out here can take this Bible, these 66 books, and they can sit here and read it in the natural mind and do research and get so much out of it of what you can get naturally. How many understands that only a true born-again believer from the Word of God is allowed to have the Word of God contained within the Scriptures open up to him to get spiritual revelation? Does that make any sense? So you get understanding of the Word contained within Scripture if you're born again. The folks I was dealing with are not born again, and they'll tell you they're not born again. So I showed him one of these Scriptures. Go over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Because when people start challenging you out here in the world, what are you going to say? So you're sitting out here and you're trying to tell your professor or your friends how you have a relationship with God and you're saved and born again and they think you're cuckoo. Because you, you can't really explain it to them because you've got something inside you that they don't have. It's like trying to talk a foreign language with them. Okay? So they start challenging you on what you believe. So if they do that, let the Holy Ghost show you what to do. And I did that. I had my phone here. They did say something to me. I said, okay, God, what? And I knew some verses, and sometime I wasn't near my Bible, so I had to Google it real quick, get, get, get the scripture, and then send, then, then send it back to them. Okay? And here's one of the ones I was doing. And look at Ephesians 2 and go over to verses 14. Because he says, show me one verse that you got access to God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you guys here know as a Christian you've got access to God? Seriously, do you know that? Do you understand that? You don't have to beg God. You don't have to plead with God. You don't have to sit here, oh my God, I'm not worthy. Duh, nobody's worthy. So how do I have access? Look at this. Watch. For he is our peace, and this is so powerful. Excuse me. He is our peace who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, that's between Jew and Gentile, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Now watch this, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain in the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, uh, uh, well, far off to them that were nigh. Now watch, for through him we both have what? Access by one spirit unto the Father. I sent that to this guy, and he's never heard that before in his life. Got quiet. It is a few hours later, he comes back with something else. Let me kind of explain to you some things that was sharing with me. Man, he had no understanding whatsoever. His eyes have been dark, darkened. He can quote you scripture, but he has no clue. He has, he has no understanding of God's word. Because I know I've got access because they could not believe the things I was <laughs> saying to them. Because I mean, I mean, I'm talking to them like I'm talking to you. I'm a born-again believer. I'm a child of Almighty God. I've been sanctified. I've been, ju I've been justified. I, I go to God and I talk to him personally. They're like, what? I mean, they are like, like, like I had two hands on my shoulders. Much less talking about Good Friday and Easter because you have a personal, you, you can see things they don't. Okay? As a Christian, you should be able to do that. So I told him, that he's wasting his time because he started telling me things like um, who he was praying to, okay? He, um, he told me that he was praying to um, um, St. Nicholas. I said, so you pray to Santa Claus? And one prays to St. Patrick. And one prays to St. Valentine's, okay? And I said, all these folks are dead, okay? Now once, I'm going to show you the things I him, Okay, I said, you've got a helper that can help you pray. Okay, he said, well, I pray to Mother Mary. One of them even told me, I'm gonna, as I get down through this, that Mother Mary sits on the right-hand side of Jesus Christ in heaven. I said, show that to me in Scripture. Then he gets mad. I don't have to show it to you in Scripture because my church has written other doctors to go along with it. In other words, they really believe 
that God's word, the Bible here, is not the foundation that their popes and their priests and their apostle creed and their council can change that along the way. And because somebody else says that Mary sits on the right hand side of Jesus, to them that makes it true. Now, this is scary stuff. So I said, you have a helper, and his, he is the Holy Ghost. I said, go to John 14. Now watch this, go, go over to John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's what the Bible says. This is what they were lacking. They have no understanding of that. That I, They cannot believe that I was saying that I have a relationship with God. I know, because I said, listen, you can argue to the cows come home. This thing, we're, talking about, we're talking about like letters, just paragraphs of stuff that was taught me. I said, here's the, here's the bottom line is. When I go to bed tonight, I will sleep like a baby. I have peace and joy in Jesus Christ. I am sealed to the day of redemption. I know who I am in Christ, not because of any, quote, works that I have done but that you're trying to do to get there. Mine is settled. It's in Jesus Christ. So when I go to bed tonight, I can rest in him, hallelujah, of what he fulfilled on the cross for me, and you're trying to work your way to heaven. And I said, God bless you. And I said, I get this revelation from the Holy Ghost because he's my helper. Mary's not. I said, I will sit here and honor Mary for her giving birth to Jesus, but I'm not supposed to pray to Mary. She died. She went to heaven. That's the end of the story. Quit putting up graven images and, and statues of Mary. I said, that's all this bleeding eyes. and stuff. that's of the devil. That's got nothing to do with God. Well, that is really torn up. Okay? I'm just trying to show you the things that people are believing out here, guys. It's in your colleges, it's all around you. And how that garbage has creeped into the Protestant churches. More than you can ever imagine. That's where you get Easter from. That's where you get Good Friday from. That's where you get Valentine's from. And that's just, go, just go look up for yourself. I'm not making this stuff up. You just get mad at me because I pointed it out to you. That's what, that's what it is. You don't want to hear it. It's the truth. Go to Romans. What's this right here? Romans 8. God's word speaks for itself, hey, amen. How many, how many here believes that? People are being brainwashed. Look at what uh, uh, Romans 8, verses 26 through 27 says. Because if you're a Christian today here or listening to this, I want to make sure that you understand your relationship. And the Holy Spirit is your helper, hallelujah. Look at this. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth that which is of the mind uh, by, of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now this really got under their skin because I told them I was a saint. Oh my God, all H broke loose. <laughs> How in the world can you be a saint like St. Nicholas, okay, or St. Valentine's or whatever? I said, but who do you think makes your folks a saint? He said, the Pope or the council. I said, well, God makes me, me a saint. And that really got under the skin. So I'm sitting here trying to help them. I really felt sorry for them. I really do. Tony said, Tony said you, you, you're, you're actually enjoying this, aren't you? I said, no, I'm, not. I'm actually enjoying it, talking to people because I see God using me, but I feel sorry for people who's blinded. Don't you? I really do. It's sad to see this, but I saw it more and more and more. Um, I've got access to God. Do you? When you die for sure, you know, you know, you know, you, do you know that you're going to be going to heaven? I know I am. So he said, no one can know that. So he told me, no one can know that. I said, could, I said, I can't imagine being you, living my life every day, not knowing if I'm going to go to heaven or not, if my works are not good enough. I said, because you're sitting here praying to Mary, praying to statues, praying to dead saints, having no relationship with the true word which, which is contained in the scriptures, and you're going to put your trust, your say, you said, in 2,000 years of, because see, God, where, where they get this from is in the Bible when God starts the church through the book of Acts, more on that in just a minute, they think that the Greek took over. They think at that point the church now is built upon Peter, more on that in just, just a minute. 
And they have this council of people who makes all these decisions and changes everything, and they follow all these creeds and all this kind of garbage. Well, for me, God's word, the scriptures that he's given us, is all I, is all I need. I don't need his opinion of some uh, bald-headed pope. I don't need that. I don't need some old man who's never been married, sitting over here, going back and forth, making stuff on his chest. Who cares about that kind of garbage? Okay? Going through all the rituals and all your flowers and all your nice-looking clothes, walking around, acting all religious, won't get you to heaven. God looks at your heart. He don't care what all those little flowery burning candles and, and putting flowers everywhere and how, how majesty can you make the building and all the stained glass windows and all the ceilings and stuff. It's beautiful to our eyes, but it can be dead on the inside. And most of them are. Okay? So I showed him more scripture over and over and over about this. Okay? Um, look at Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. I said, showed him, for, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I try to show him these scriptures, but it's like going, it's like talking to that wall. It's like me trying to talk to my, 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 my little dog about salvation. He has no clue what I'm even talking about because he can't communicate. So certain ones wanted to fight and argue. Certain ones were sincere and listened. And certain ones just kind of just stopped because, you know, God's word speaks for itself. Amen? And TBN hung up on me because said the world has gotten to a place we want to just mash it all together. Take all the Catholics and the Greek Orthodox and the Episcopalians and the Pentecostals and the Protestants and bring them all together. Why do you think that is? I'm going to tell you why it is. Because the Catholic Church thinks that they are the true church, which they're not. Okay, that's a, that is a counterfeit of the devil. And they have tried for all these years to bring back the Muslims, bring back Christians, bring back Pentecostals, bring back all the religions back to them again because of what happened to Martin Luther. I'm going to tell you what I found over this debate. Okay, the Catholics and the Greeks fight and they hate each other. And they cannot stand Martin Luther. They can't stand him because of what he did. When he came out from the Catholic Church, this is where the Protestant churches start. And the guy said, well, you're a father of Martin Luther. I said, no, no, no. I could care less about Martin Luther. I said, because Martin Luther didn't even like the Jews. Go look it up. I told the guy. I said, so no, I don't follow Martin Luther. I follow Almighty God. I said, my relationship is not with Martin Luther or any, quote, religion. It's with God himself, which really blew their minds. Because when you start saying these kind of things, it messes them up. I said, I don't pray to St. Nicholas Santa Claus. I don't pray to Valentine's. I don't pray for any of these kind of stupidness. I pray to Almighty God. I said, why don't you go to him personally yourself? Why can't you do that? They don't understand this. They think I've lost my mind. And set to see people out here who, th and, and they're in the same boat that I've been put in as a Christian. That's not Christianity. That's got nothing to do with God. You can call yourself religious or godly all day long. If you're not a born again believer and the word of God, Christ not inside you, you're not a Christian. Does that make any sense? So we should stop bringing all that garbage into our churches and try to put it all together because it ain't going to work. Go to Hebrews 10. This is very interesting here when I, get, when I got into the part about the saints. And I try to explain it real nice to him that I'm a saint, like you are a saint. Because I've always heard, Greg, nobody's perfect. Well, the Bible says different. The Bible says Matthew 5, 48 says what? Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. What's it mean? Because you grew up in school in your home where you're great, nobody's perfect. How many, times, how, many times, how many times have you heard that? Okay, Your body's not perfect. Your soul is not perfect, but guess what is? If you've been born again, your spirit man is perfect, hallelujah, because you've been born again. He bought you with a price, the Bible says. You belong to him, and he's there, which is what makes it perfect. You're sealed to the day of redemption. You belong to him, the Bible says. He says, you become a saint. You've been sanctified. Look at what it says here. This is so powerful. Look at Hebrews 10, 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them. Are you part of the them? That are sanctified. 
How many understands that when you accept Christ as your Savior, that means you've been justified in God's sight because your faith was put in Jesus Christ of what he did, and then a sanctification process takes place inside your spirit, man. And the Bible says you've been sanctified, and it starts working its way out through you. Okay? Not some dead saint of her because some pope said you are a saint. It's because you go out here like uh, Mary or Martha or any of them. Name anybody who, who they call saints, Valentine's, you know, and do good works. That don't make you a saint. Good works won't get you into heaven. Does that make sense? This is what's taught to us over and over and over and over and over. And this is what I dealt with on Monday and Tuesday. And it was so sad to see so many people still working for their salvation. It's out here, guys. And, now we, and we got peace, don't we? If you're born again, you should have peace. This is, what, this is what's scary. Um, here's, a, here's some difference I found. The Catholics have what they call a pope, and they believe his built upon Peter. The Greek Orthodox, which is a sister church of the Catholic Church, <laughs> don't believe in the pope. They have a group of men, a council, who they call Peter. Okay? And I was trying to explain to both of them, guys... I, I, I like Peter. The church ain't built upon Peter. Your church might be. My church is not. Well, prove it to me in Scripture. So Y'all hear me quote it all the time. How they go back and show them Scripture. How when God, when Peter is, is, is sitting here talking to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ says, Who does men say that I am? And he said, Well, some say you're Elijah, and some say you're a prophet, and some say you're this, you're that. He says, But Peter, who do you say that I am? And this is Jesus speaking to Peter. And Peter looks at him and says, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. That's the Word of God. That's the kingdom. His eyes got opened up. He says, only my Father in heaven could have revealed this to you. And he says, upon this rock I'll build my church. He's not talking about Peter. And I even try to help these people and say, look, go look up your own Greek word, <laughs> Petra and Petros. Petra is the big rock. It's Christ. That's the foundation. Petros is the little rock of the revelation that Peter got from Christ. Does that make any sense? So they're sitting here with a group of men in the Greek Orthodox called Peter and the, and the Pope called Peter, and they're trying to build their life on Petros, which is a little rock of mankind missing the true word of God, which is Christ. Does that make any sense? I said, so my rock is not Peter. My rock is Christ. Hallelujah. And they cannot get this. One started trying to argue back and forth about the rosary beads, which goes back to paganism and witchcraft. So don't ever do rosary beads, please. Rosary beads is used by Catholics. Greek Orthodox don't use rosary beads, but they do pray to Mary. And they say she sits on the right-hand side of Jesus Christ, which is wrong. Again, they both pray to dead saints. They both hate Martin Luther King, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther coming out from the Reformation. Y'all seen this anybody? Look it up for yourself. See, here's a problem. I put my trust in the Word of God. They put their trust in church history. Big difference. Which one are you going to do? That's why it's foreign to them when I say to them, Good Friday is not biblical and Resurrection Sunday morning is not biblical. That blows their minds. They start trying to find everywhere they can to make it fit. Again, I heard one guy say, Well, now, Greg, the three days and the three nights are just partial days. I said, Show, show it to me in Scripture. That that's what that means. Well, that's what I've always heard. That's what you've always heard wrong. It goes back to Hebrew. And Hebrew says... Three days and three nights are, are full 24 hours, 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. It goes back to a full three days and three nights. Why? Because the, the, the Jews required a sign. And the Jews said you had to be dead for three days and three nights and the body had to start to turn before they believed that she was really dead. That's why he waited for four days before he resurrected Lazarus. It's got nothing to do with the Pope, nothing to do with the Greek. It's about the Hebrew, and this is where they missed it. The guy, I kept saying that. He says, well, the, well, the New Testament is written in, in, inside Greek. Duh. I said, it's translated from Aramaic and Hebrew. I said, do you really think that they're walking along in the Old Testament, and all of a sudden, 
it stops. You have 400 years of quietness, which is between Old and New Testament. And all you have is the Maccabees and the story that goes along with Hanukkah, which is not written down except in the G, in the G part. Now watch. And all of a sudden, they, Jesus starts walking in the book of Matthew. We're all going to start speaking Greek now. And that's not how it was. That's how it's presented to us. But that's not how it really was. It was written down in Greek, yes. But do you think God said, okay, I've had enough Hebrew. So now we're going to take all the Greek gods and all the Greek philosophies and all the Greek paganism and let's just bring it on into Christianity because we have, we have more Gentiles now. Uh, that outnumbers everybody else. So we're going to just pull all that kind of stuff in here and throw away the foundation of the scripture of where the word of God came from. Hello? Anybody saying this? This is what's happening with the world today. So people, people loses it. Go to Ephesians 4. This is so powerful. Had this guy tell me, well, I go to my council. So what's that? My church council. I go by my apostles creed. His kid kept naming all these things. I'm looking them up. Because that stuff is this religious garbage. And he told me, there is no such thing in the scriptures about a pastor. I said, well, sir, I am a pastor. I said, you wrong about that. I said, so let's, let's, let's kind of look at that. Go over to Ephesians 4.11. Let's see what God gave versus what your religion gave. Okay? Because you're not going to find pastors in a Catholic church. Look at this, Ephesians 4.11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some uh, evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. That's what Jesus Christ said when he resurrected from the dead. He gave, it's called fivefold ministry. Why did he give that for? So the fivefold ministry can help equip the saints, you who's been born again, not those dead Valentines and St. Nicholas people. You saints to help equip you so you're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine from the Catholic Church, from the Greek Orthodox Church, and everybody else in between. So you're not tossed to and fro with all this kind of garbage. The Bible says he gave the fivefold ministry to help equip the saints. Should you on your own read God's Word and Bible? Yes. But a pastor's job is not to get up here and give you a, three, a joke in a three-point sermon about salvation. His job is to teach you and equip you with the Word of God. And if a pastor's not doing that, he's not doing his, his calling, period. So that's what, what the Bible says. That's why Christians are so dumbed down in Scripture about the very word they say that they believe. They can't defend it. Are y'all getting this, anybody? I had to go through this over and over and over and over with these people. It's amazing. Go, go to 1 Corinthians. Almost done. God told me he reads scriptures every day. He has daily readings, he says. And I said, Ned, how's that going for you? How's that working out for you? You can read scriptures all day long. They even have certain books they call it out of. How many of you ever, ever read a prayer? If you have, please don't raise your hand. <laughs> Just make out like you hadn't. Don't ever, ever, ever go to a church like, like, like they have. And, and I remember doing this one time. I remember years ago, I went to Episcopalian church with a friend of mine. And I've been to a couple of Catholics on purpose to visit as well. And I remember walking in the door, and it was really weird because on the back of the pew you have all these little things laying down. We have to get up now. With, with, with the back I get sometimes with this, this little nerve that comes up, I couldn't I do that. I'd have to sit here and just stand up in some one spot because I'd go up and down on that little bench doing all the Hail Marys about 50 times during, during the service. If you're an old person, I guess you just can't do it. But they sit here and they go through all the rituals and have the poles of snakes all over them. And I remember sitting here and they're going through this ritual of let us pray. So I was the only person in the hotel who closed their eyes and started praying. Everybody pulls out a book and they start reading the prayer. That's not praying. You're reading a prayer that somebody else wrote from church, some church council that is not from your heart. Are you getting this, anybody? I'm trying to, that's why I was trying to get this guy here to say, say the exact same thing. Look at 1 Corinthians 1, 18 and 19. Because this, is, this don't make any sense to these folks. For the preaching of the cross is to them that, that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, 
Hear this in Scripture. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring down to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So all these so-called guys I was talking to and people I heard that's all, all over the place who wants to find and argue with you with no biblical proof whatsoever except their, quote, church council because this guy told me, he said, <laughs> he said the feast days you're talking about has been done away with and our new church council gave us the feast of Easter. Feast of Easter. Again, I says, show it to me in the Bible. Oh, I said, oh, I forgot, you don't recognize the Bible. You recognize your church council. I stand on God's word. No such thing as a feast of Easter. No such thing as Lent. No such thing as Ash Wednesday. All that kind of garbage, it's got none in scripture. They, 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 they went crazy. They went crazy because they've taken and have switched things around to make it fit what they wanted to say and it's not even in the Bible. But we push away the very thing that is the true word of God, which is Christ, who come here to fulfill the very scriptures that was given to Moses. Christ came here to fulfill that for you and for me. Hallelujah. So don't sit here as a Christian and go along with Ash Wednesday. Hear me. And Good Friday... And it's kind of garbage. It's not biblical. It's of the devil. It has got nothing to do with God. I'm sorry. It's just biblical truth. The sad part is, is that getting them to open up their eyes is like pulling teeth. God has to do it. So I told him, Matthew 15, look, look at this right here. Now watch. But he answered and he said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? I gave him these scriptures. And I tell him this right here, the next verse, verses 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and the commandments of men. I was trying to give him these scriptures to help him, not to hurt him. When I say him, there's a bunch of folks. At one, you know, some are all at one time and some at individual times during the day. They just kept saying... To me, the feast of Easter, their counsel, praying to Mary, sad, they're lost. And you might have some Catholic friends yourself. Some are born again. I have met some so-called Baptists or Methodists or Pentecostals, if you want to call them that, that's not biblical. They're born again, but they're still following a religion, following of some type of religion of man when you do that, that cuts the Holy Spirit off. You're not going to be able to grow when you're trying to add to God, add to the Bible, add to the Scriptures. You can only go so far with it. The Holy Spirit is very gracious. How many here knows that? <laughs> we, could be, we could be dumb as a rock and go through all kinds of stupidness and the Holy Spirit is here with us to help us, to guide us. Eventually, it might take 20 years, He'll get you out of where, you're supposed to, where you are now to where you're supposed to be. Amen? Let me give you some, some examples. Look at this about the difference between Scripture and the Word of God. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Now how many here knows I am not sanctified through the Bible? I'm sanctified for who? The Word which is contained within the Scriptures. Does that make any sense? So my religion and my works and reading prayers and reading scriptures daily that's why he makes up is not sanctifying me will not get me to heaven I am sanctified and so are you if you're being born, born again because I know the word does that make any sense I know Christ that's what it's talking about go over to Hebrews 4 notice, I know it's a lot of scriptures but I want to give you everything I possibly can and guys I'm only going to give you about half of them there's just so much more in the Bible dealing with this okay what's this right here look at Hebrews 4 and look at verses uh, 12. Now watch this. This and you'll, you'll, you'll probably get very clearly. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. Now watch. The Bible is not sharper than any two-edged sword. It is ink, it is leather, it is paper, it's scripture. It's not talking about that. What is sharper? The word of God that's contained within the scripture. 
See, most folks don't know the Word of God, which is Christ. And if you don't know the Word of God, you can't learn the Scripture. You can try to read the Scripture under your own understanding and miss the Word of God and walk around with your own understanding of it like you're all that, working your way to heaven, you think. And when you die, you're going to be shocked to know, I'm not in heaven. Duh, because you, you rejected the very one who came here as the Word of God to die for you. Does that make any sense? Most folks miss this. I'm going to close right here. This is a good one here, and this is where they're at. Go to Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8. Here's a problem they have. Just like coming out of the law, the Old Testament, God come here to do what? To do what? Fulfill it. When I say fulfill it, again, make another way. <laughs> uh, to, 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 to make it to where you on your own can't do it, he has to do it for you. Does that make sense? Okay, now, this is important. These folks I talked to Monday and Tuesday are still trying to do it themselves. They're still trying to make it through what they've been told of Mother Mary, St. Valentine, St. Nicholas, and all the church council, and they're missing something, which is the power of God through the Holy Ghost. Why do you think you've been, you've been to churches before, and they're preaching, get up here preaching, and this is what you hear. It's kind of like being watching a cartoon of Charlie Brown. Remember the mom on the phone? Wah, 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 wah. Remember that? Okay. You ever, 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 ever watched that cartoon? That's how some preachers are when you're preaching. You have no clue what they're talking about. It makes no understanding to you. You don't, you don't connect with them. Why? No Holy Spirit there. The Spirit of God is not there. Now, getting up here and running across the stage and doing backflips and shouting and dancing and all those kind of stupid, that's got nothing to do with God. I can dance up a storm. I can kick my heels out and fall over and be emotional, still minus the Holy Ghost. I can have a kundalini spirit, which is of the devil. I can do all these things emotionally and still miss God. I can sit here in God's Word and I can read scriptures all day long and meditate and fast and still miss the word of God. So what did they get here in Acts 1.8? Watch this, watch this right here. This is what they're missing. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be a witness unto me. You shall be a witness unto me. You shall be a witness unto me. Listen, the scriptures can't witness to anybody minus the Holy Ghost and the true word of God contained within that scripture. Does that make any sense? Watch. Unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What do you think God did this for? He sent the Holy Ghost down to these disciples who is the very first church that they claim they have but no, they don't. God started the new covenant church, hallelujah, with power and the words contained within the scriptures and they went out here and they preached because at that time there was no Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They had the Torah. They had the book of Psalms, which is God's word. And they preached the gospel with power and the word of God was being put out there. Now we've come back and we've added in all the religious garbage again, and we've lost the power of the witness, which is Christ, the Word of God. Does it make any sense to anybody? So in closing, for you guys, the whole point of God doing this for me this week was to remind you, yes, you need to learn and grow. That's when we have to teaches on Wednesday nights. That's why I teach on Sundays and Gary teaches every Sunday. We're trying to teach, teach, teach. But even as we're teaching, only the Holy Ghost can reveal it to you. That's it. I can give you all scriptures all day long. It means nothing unless it leaps off that page. It will leap off the page into your heart through the Holy Ghost if you have the word. So here today, as we get ready to close, you can stand to your feet. If you're here today and you are not born again, the very first part of getting the Word of God is to get in. Because the Word of God took on flesh. The Word became flesh <laughs> and died for you as a Lamb of God to fulfill this very thing. Amen? And if you accept by faith what He did, I promise you this, you'll get born again and you then can have faith 
and peace and joy and sanctification and justification and know who you are in Christ and sleep like a baby tonight. You say, well, I don't understand all this. Listen, I've been preaching and pastoring for 25 plus years. You think I got all this at one time? No. I've changed my mind over the years on many of the things the Holy Spirit had to work on me. Amen? The Spirit will teach you the Word when you get away from doctrines of man. When you get away from religion of man. When you quit listening. You might tell me something, I'm going to hear you. But if it don't match it with what's contained in God's Word, I'm going to put it off to the side. I'm not going to believe what you say. Don't believe what I say either. Check it out. Don't follow ever follow a pastor or any, quote, man of God. Okay? He's here to help you, but he's also human. Amen? Follow God. If anybody ever tells you something that is not written in Scripture and you see it being fulfilled through Christ in the, in the New Testament and in the, in the Old, then don't. it's not from God. Holy Spirit's never going to go against the written word. How many here believes that? So if you're here today and you're not saved, this is your opportunity. If you have been saved, thank God. And now do what he tells you to do. If he says come pray for a loved one or give a testimony, whatever your need is, you do that. Amen? What's your need? thank you guys for coming today. I hope you got something out of this. I um, hope all the debates and everything God gave me during the week to bring you this message was worth it. I hope you got something out of it. Please go, please go and do more research on it. Amen. Uh, thank you guys for coming. If you can, come uh, Wednesday and also next Sunday. Uh, Jeff, do you mind closing us in prayer? you mind closing us in prayer?